Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet part two of the Brick Row Shawl. For part one, please check the link in the description or simply search Moogly Blog Brick Row Shawl. In this pattern, we'll be jumping in to sections three and four. So there's one more video to follow where we'll finish up our pattern. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are with part two of the Brick Row Shawl. In part one, we started with our small point here and worked all the way through section one. And then we joined our new colors and did section two. We wanted to make sure that when we finished section two, we ended up with double crochet row that started with an increase and was actually worked from the wrong side. So now we're ready to join our next set of colors for section three. So now we're ready to add section three. You can start with a couple of new colors. I'm going to go ahead and reuse the ones I demoed section one with. We're going to join from the wrong sides. You can see I've got the stripey side here, not the brick side. And I've definitely moved up that stitch marker that indicates the increase side. It's just a great visual reminder. Now, just like when we joined our section two, we are not going to be increasing on this first row. So I'm going to join with a standing half double crochet again. So I'll take whatever I want to be my C1 color and yarn over twice and go right into that first stitch right there. We simply yarn over, pull that loop up, and then pull through all those loops like so. Then we're going to front loop, double crochet in each stitch across until we get to that last stitch where we'll work another half double crochet. So it's just like the first row that we made in section two. And here we are at the end of section three, row one, a much abbreviated version, of course, on our little demo here. We've reached the end of the row, and just like last time, we want to switch to our C2 color for this next row, so we're going to go ahead and pull up our loop and secure it. Then we're going to be adding row two of section three, again, from the wrong side. So you can go ahead and get ready with your C2 color. So now we're ready to rejoin for row two here with our new color. We're going to start again with a standing double crochet. So we're going to hold on to that end, yarn over twice, and go into that first stitch. We want to work under sort of that loop and that tail end from that half double crochet. There we go, get that in there. And then because we can see this is our increase side, we need to put a second double crochet in that same stitch. Working into these standing half, half double crochets can be a little bit tricky. So after I've worked into it, I always like to give that tail end a little tug there to just snug it right back up. Then we can go ahead and use that stitch marker to mark the first stitch of this row. After that, I'm sure you're familiar with the pattern a little bit by now, we're simply going to double crochet in each stitch across. And here we are at the end of row two. We've got our increase at the beginning, we've worked from the wrong side, and since it's our number two color, we know we just work one row with it, so we can go ahead and secure that. Then we're going to go ahead and turn to begin row three. And now we're ready for row three. And at this point, we're really getting back into that stitch pattern that we were following before. We start with our chain of three so that we can come up to that previous row first stitch, slip stitch right into that one right there. There we go. And then we start with our chain one and single crochet. We've switched back to our number one color, so it's time for a single crochet and front post treble crochet row. So we can look at our written instructions or we can read the rows below us. We can see that the last time we did a front post treble crochet, single crochet row, we just had the one. So we know this one needs to start with three. So there's two and three single crochets. Then we're going to front post treble around the next stitch below the next stitch. So make sure that's lining up right. We can follow that next stitch on down. It's worked into the top of that stitch right here. Work off those loops for the treble. And then it's just the same repeat we did before for all our other front post treble crochet, single crochet rows. Single crochet in the next three, front post treble in the next, continue on across until you end up single crocheting in those last two stitches. So here we are at the end of row three. 
You can see we've worked on a cross. It's not an increase row, but we've got those stitches all lined up and just single crochets in those last two. Now we know from previous experience that the next row is going to be in this color. We can look at our little indicator here and know that we're going to have a chainless starting double crochet and double crochet in that first stitch and then double crochet on across. So you can follow along with a written pattern or you can read your work as I've been teaching you to do in this video. We continue section three for a total of 22 rows. Again, we want to start counting from that first row of section three. This will land us on for this section, what will be a row four rep. We're about to make row four. So like I say, we know exactly what it is. We'll want to end this section on a row where we chain this double starting double crochet and double crochet again in the first stitch and then double crochet on across. Then we'll be ready to break our yarn for section three and pick up yet another set of colors for section four. So on our little sample here, I ended on our row four repeat. So now we're ready to add section four, which is colors D1 and D2. The original, I used the graphite and white, but for our sample here, I'm gonna switch back to the greens again. Again, just to conserve a little bit of yarn. So again, we're going to join from the wrong side of our shawl, so we wanna make sure we can't see any of those front post treble crochets. And we're going to start again with our standing half double crochet. Hold on to the end of the yarn, yarn over twice, and go right into that first stitch. There we go. Then front loop double crochet in each stitch across, ending with a half double crochet in the very last stitch. Once again, we're not increasing in this row, so you should have ended section three with a total of 75 stitches, and we'll have 75 stitches in row one of section four as well. And since we just worked a double crochet row with our number one color, we know it's time to go ahead and secure that loop and add our second color for this section. In section three, we did not turn at the end of row one, but for this one, we are going to turn. We'll be adding our second color for section four from the right side. So other than turning or not turning, this all looks pretty familiar, right? We're going to join with our standing double crochet. So we find that very first stitch, pull that little loop out of the way there, and join right to that stitch. Now, this is our work even side. We can see it straight, our increase is over here. There's our little indicator. So we're just going to jump on over to the next stitch and continue double crocheting across. Oops, make sure our little tail doesn't get in the way there. There we go. And then we want to make sure to put two double crochets in the very last stitch of this row. So here we are at the end of row two. You can see I simply double crocheted across, working two double crochets into that very last stitch. And now we can tell that color one is right, ready and waiting for us where we need it, so we will not turn at the end of row two. Indeed, we go back to the same pattern we've been following all along. We know that the next row is going to be a single crochet and post stitch row. We start with a chain three, we slip stitch to that first one, and we can look at the written pattern, or we can look at the last single crochet row. The previous one started with three single crochets, so this one will start with just one single crochet, then a front post treble, working on across until we've got a front post treble in that third to the last one, and then a single crochet in those last two stitches. And we just continue on from there, just like we've been doing. For section four, we're going to make a total of 18 rows, again, starting counting with that first row of this section itself. The last one will be another repeat just like the one we did, we ended for our previous row, where we chain list starting double crochet and double crochet in the first stitch and then double crochet in each remaining stitch across. So kind of the opposite of what we did here. We started on one end and double crocheted at the end. We wanna make sure that the last row for section four starts with two double crochets and ends working across with just one stitch in the last stitch. So in part one of the brick row shawl, we went over sections one and section two. And in this video, we went over sections three and section four. So in part three, we'll cover section five and adding a really lovely border all the way around. And that's how to crochet part two of the Brick Row Shawl. Be sure to follow along on Moogly or check the description so you can go to part three as soon as it's available. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.